So I want to prove that this language, which is the set of all strings of zeros that are a perfect power of two uh, for any power of two that you want is not a regular language. So for example, in here, we have um, a single zero, which corresponds to when n is zero, two to the power of zero is one. So that's one zero. We also will have two zeros and then four zeros and then then eight zeros and etc. So I want to convince you that this is not a regular language. So let's suppose that it were regular. So suppose L were regular. Then uh, what does that mean? That means that there is some pumping constant P for L. So there exists a P for this language L, and I'm just abbreviating that to say exists a P. So then now what we need to do is we need to pick a string that is in that language and of length at least P. So let's choose some string W. Well, well the usual convention is to place the P wherever there's the variable in the exponent. So here I'm gonna put two to the power P. Well, two to the P is definitely at least P, so that's no problem. And this is in the language because I just substituted the variable in, so that's no problem. So what we need to do then is to look at all decompositions, look at all decompositions of this string W into X, Y, and Z according to the three, into, according to the rules. So here, since the string is all zeros, uh, we know that X is some uh, zeros, let's call it alpha, the number of them. Y is some number of zeros, let's call it beta. And Z is the rest. I'm just gonna be lazy and say rest here. So then now what we need to do is we need to choose a value i, so some number i, such that uh, x, y to the i, z is not in L because it would contradict the for all statement that, um, that no matter what i you pick, you always stay in the language, but here we wanna find one where you get out. So let's think, well, if we, so here we're dealing with perfect squares. So if we, so, so let's actually look at this. Let's look at this in general. So uh, what is x, y to the i, z? So that is equal to just copy down the x piece. Then I have i copies of the y piece. So i times beta number of zeros. And then the z part, well, that's gonna be p, oh, whoops, two to the power p minus alpha minus beta because we had two to the p to start with, the x piece took alpha away, and the, the single y took uh, a single beta away. And, and that's the whole string. So since we have all a uh, whole bunch of zeros, we can collapse them together to get a single exponent. Well, the alphas are gonna cancel. So I'm gonna have two to the power p plus i minus one times beta. So what we can infer from this is that this thing is in L if and only if that exponent is a perfect square. So 2p plus i minus 1 times beta, it, it, not a perfect square, is a power of 2, I should say, power of 2. Okay, so let's see. So what we can do is to think, well, if we, if we set i equal to 1, then this thing would be 0, and so 2 to the p plus 0 is 2 to the p, which is a power of 2. So what if we set i equal to 2, as an example? So let's choose, let's choose i equal to 2. Well, that, that is 2 to the p plus a single beta, well, we know that beta is at least one. So this is at strictly larger than two to the P because beta is at least one. And it's at most two to the power P plus a single P because the beta is at most P. And how do we know that? Because the X, Y pieces together are of length at most P in total. 
And what we're asking is, what is the length of y by itself? And that is at most p. So that's what we get here. So uh, let, let me actually write where all this comes from. So that inequality comes from the fact that beta is at least 1. That one comes from the fact that beta is at most p. And I'm going to do one more inequality, which is that this is at most 2 to the p plus 2 to the p. And we know that is true because p is always less than 2 to the p. Okay? And what we know over here is that this is 2 to the p plus 1 because that's just, that's just what the definition of perfect squares, the powers of 2, are. So here, uh, what we can actually infer is that 2 to the p plus beta could be equal to this one, except what we're going to do is we know that it's not just a single uh, less than or equal to, it is a strict inequality. It's strictly less than 2 to the p. And if it wasn't, we can just pick a higher value of p if it wasn't large enough, but it, it always is, so there's no issue here. So it's not equal to this power of 2, it's not equal to that power of 2, and these two are consecutive powers of 2. So it's kind of like the perfect squares proof, except now we have a slightly different uh, thing that we need to check right here, which is that p is strictly less than 2 to the p. And so since it's strictly between two consecutive powers of 2, it can't be equal to either one of them, and so it itself is not a power of 2, implying that this language of perfect powers of 2 is not a regular language.